YOLO, this is FHRC Brony, and uh, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. Uh, actually, this is the third time I'm doing this video attempt. I want to go ahead and do a, an, an overview of my Traxxas TRX4 and one of my Pinkie Pies. Um, tip down there on camera. Huh? Yes, I am a Brony. Uh, okay. No big deal. Anyways, um... I want to go ahead and do an, an overview of my Traxxas TRX Sports uh, Sport. Uh, I wouldn't really call this a sport because I actually got this used and the seller told me, or I actually got this in a trade, but um, originally she was going to sell it. And yes, this was actually used to be owned by a girl. She told me that she was going to sell this thing, but you know, um, she saw my Nitro Slash that was posted I wanna, and it said I wanted to trade it. A trade um, cash only or trade for a TRX4 sport particularly and she said no I have a TRX4 that you can trade off and so we did the trade and then here we are so the, the TRX4 uh, this is a rock crawler from Traxxas and um, I was gonna go with Axial because I know Axial does really make good quality crawlers but I was like Traxxas blood in myself and uh you can call me a Traxxas fanboy if you want to i don't really give a damn um i don't really consider myself a Traxxas fanboy i mean i love Traxxas i own like track that i own two vortex i own a slash i own a mini slash which was a was which was an e-revo at one point and a two-wheel drive rustler so yes i am Traxxas diehard um but i don't really consider myself a fanboy I just happen to like Traxxas. So, um, TRX4 Sport is a rock crawler. I believe it's the first rock, true rock crawler from Traxxas. Um, they did make a another RC that was close to a crawler, but it was only it was based on an E Revo, and that was a Summit, and that did have remote locking diffs and a two speed transmission. I think it had a two speed transmission. I don't remember. But that was good, but we we kind of want something that was more higher quality, not higher quality, but like more scaled, but still have the quality and reliability of a Traxxas that we all know. So Traxxas came out with the TRX4 uh, back in 2017 as the Land Rover Defender, and that was a long wheelbase version of the Defender, not the Defender 90, which has uh, the short wheelbase. Um, and eventually that changed to the, eventually evolved to the tactical unit, the Blazer, the um, Bronco, and the Sport, which is their low-end version of the TRX. And also some of these kits that they made. They made a TRX4 Sport kit and a TRX4 chassis kit. So this one right over here is, the seller originally got, uh, I should say not the seller, the person that I trade off my Nitro Slash with. Originally, this was a TRX for Sport that's been upgraded to have the specs and features of a, a regular TRX4. Like, if you got the Bronco, the Blazer, I believe the tactical unit, but most importantly, uh, the Defender. So, this has the remote locking diffs, the um, two-speed transmission, and pretty much all the things that a regular TRX4, Defender, Bronco, and a Blazer would have. So, uh, what body do I have in this thing? Uh, and and no, it's not a TRX4, uh, Bronco, Blazer, Tactical Unit, Defender, nor a sport body. This is a Proline Toyota 1991 Forerunner body. And some of you guys who are subscribed to my YouTube channel and friends with me and you guys follow some of my old videos and look at some of my old videos of Forerunners and you will notice that this thing, and you guys are going to be asking, doesn't that look like your car? And the answer to that is yes. I actually made this, I painted this body to make it look like, <clears throat> excuse me, I made this thing uh, to look like my actual Toyota Forerunner. I have a 1995. And and some of you 
people who are not very bright on cars. Uh, that's a, you, this, uh, this is a 1991, your car is a 1995, it should be different. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes and no, I would say. The reason why I'm saying yes, because you can tell a 1991 Forerunner to a 1995 Forerunner by looking at the grill. Uh, this one is an older version of it. And the 1995, the one that I have, doesn't have the word Toyota on it. It has just a Toyota logo and yeah. So, yes, you are correct. But as far as exterior looks, is it, they look the same. They're, 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 let's, let's just put it this way. Yes, the 1991 Forerunner is kind of different to the 1995 as far as exterior looks goes. Um, the, the easiest way to tell a 1991 to a 1995 Forerunner is, look over here. Look at the front grill. The 91s will have the, the word Toyota on the middle, on that grill, whereas the 1995, which I have, has just a Toyota logo on it, not the word Toyota. Um, but exterior, if, if but if you just look at it as, um, if you look at a 1995 to a, 90, to a 1991 on the side, they're, they're literally the same car. They're powered by the same engine. They're based on the same chassis. The body style is the same. And the interior is literally the same. There's nothing really different between the two. So, just for those who weren't really bright on cars, just because one year is older than the other one doesn't mean they're not technically the same car. It's just like... Um, a 2009 Ferrari 458 Italia is going to be the same as a 2012 Ferrari 458 Italia. They just, looks wise, they look the same, but they did have some slight updates onto it that makes it a little bit distinguishable. But this, um, 1991, 95, same car, okay? And that's the end of the story. Whew, I really... Didn't want to shove my car facts with you. Oh god, nah, that was horrible. That was a horrible pun. Oh, I'm, somebody kill me for that. Mm. Okay, anyways. Uh, 1991 Forerunner Body from Proline. This is... Um, I actually got this for like... Uh, I don't know. I forgot where I got this. I, oh wait, I actually got this. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave this to me. Uh, gave the clear body, uh, a clear body on it, and I just decided to uh, paint it. I just bought the paint and you know did all the painting myself. And yes, it it, it is colored like my real Toyota 4Runner, and I actually love it. Um, the difference between the real one that I have and the, and this one is this thing does not have a roof rack just yet and I'm going to try to figure out what the cheapest roof rack I can get because um, I'm on a budget and I want to do a little bit of a budget build on this thing and I don't want to spend hundreds of bucks on um, <laughs> spend a crap load of money and just buying a roof rack. There are some cheap ones out there that I can find on Amazon for less than 15 bucks. So, and also, uh, on my 1995 Forerunner, um, um, my 95 has, uh, I forgot what it's called. It has this, uh, has a black piece of metal that sticks out a little bit and it covers this, uh, the, this part of the windshield and it also hides the little wiper blade that goes, uh, that, that's like hanging out over in, around this area. Um, then the first generation forerunners, the second gen forerunners like this 91 and the fifth generation forerunner, which is the latest, the latest generation currently still on sale till this day has that style of wiper, um, attachment onto it. So yeah, um, I need to get that as well and possibly put a little, maybe a little, put a little bit of running boards on the bottom of this thing and, uh, but I'll figure that out myself I'm still doing these traditional body pins so I'm using body reamers to punch holes in it and you know it's it's some people say why don't you just use magnets or something like that this is my this is my RC 
I get to do whatever the hell I want to do with it. And plus, I um, I don't want to spend an, an extra few dollars on a magnet. Because, yeah, I mean, I have separate bo I have body pins that work, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I don't want to go through these new school stuff just yet. So, if, I mean, if they work, they work. They're not, this body is not going anywhere. Yeah, so, yeah. So, the body, the body mounts, I actually got that from the Bronco. And some of these, you will be seeing some Ford-related stuff in here. The windshield wiper blades are from these silver windshield wiper, whopper, <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> these silver windshield wiper blades I actually got from the TRX4 Bronco. Uh, the side mirrors are actually from the Traxxas Ford Raptor, and obviously the um, the body mounts are from the TRX Ford Bronco and the Blazer, and I believe the Defender as well. I think I don't remember, but yeah, those are straight out of the TRX Ford Bronco, the T, the Traxxas Ford Raptor, and so on and so forth. Um, let's see. One more thing about the exterior. Um, uh, my real 4Runner does not have black rims on it, unfortunately. They have those matte silver-ish uh, white rims on that came from a 4th generation 4Runner. My dad thinks it looks ugly on it, but, you know, to me, it's like, eh, it's alright. I mean, it kind of does match you know, the, um, the rim style that this one has. So I'm keeping those rims. I wanted to paint those black. Maybe one day. Uh, this front bumper, like I said, I got this used, so this thing's flopping around. I have no idea why, but um, I might go ahead and change that to um, a regular TRX4 bumper, I'll, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, um, you guys are seeing these little dolls in here. These are... As you guys know, my YouTube channel is FHRC Brony, and yes, I am a Brony. So I'm into this My Little Pony stuff. Um, so I decided to get myself uh, some M uh, My Little Pony uh, figures in there. And uh, they do fit just fine in there. I was going to put some Barbie dolls in there or something like that, or some action figures in there. But unfortunately, they're 12 inches tall, and I and they couldn't fit in here without me having to cut their legs off or something like that. Oh God, that 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 kind of sound creepy. That is that is sound creepy. I do apologize for that. But you get what I mean. I, I didn't want to do some modifications to the dolls just to have them fit in here snug. So I and plus I kind of want a full body, um, a full body um, figure to sit on sit on the sit on this RC because um, I actually got the interior uh, separately from from the body so I actually went to Walmart and got some um, uh, got some my little pony mini dolls uh, mini equestrian girl dolls I I except Applejack which is sitting in the passenger side of the car uh, I actually got her at Target when I was at um, when I was in LA visiting my mom and I told my high school friend that, you know, you want to hang out since I'm here? He said, sure. So um, he and I went to Target, you know, just went shopping around and I just found this. I found Applejack in there. So I was like, okay, let me go get her. So, yeah, exterior-wise, um, that's nothing to write home about. But I mean, I've been talking about the Forerunner body because I just love the freaking Forerunner. Ever since I got that Forerunner from my uncle as a birthday gift, I was like, oh my God, I love this car. So, um, before, I'll, I'll get into the interior stuff in a bit. I just wanna go ahead and take off the, uh, take off the body and show you guys the inside of this wonderful uh, rock crawler from Traxxas. Um, let me take this off. And I do have some headlights in here and working tail lights. You can see by those light buckets. There you go. Put this down. Okay, so now we are underneath the hood of this TRX4. Um, I cut a little bit of the fender fender wells here because I have um, the light buckets that I originally put in here uh, were too big, so I had to cut a little bit of the fender um, just to make it fit. So 
it's no big deal. I mean, it's all right. It's just, I mean, you're not going to see when the body is on. But um, that's just a little modification I just did myself. Um, the servo, um, this is not the XL, no, not the XL, not the XL. Uh, the servo is not from Traxxas. This is some aftermarket servo. I don't even know the brand. Um, there's a brand name logo over here, so if you guys can see that. It's upside down, though. So if just flip your phone upside down, you'll see the logo. Yeah. Um, that's not from Traxxas. That's uh, not the 2075X servo with the metal gears in it. Um, this one's not brushed. This is a brushless. Uh, and I actually got this as brushless. Um, it's kind of messy here. It's, it's like spaghetti. The wires are like spaghetti in here. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but... I'm not gonna go bother doing any sort of mod um, organization here because you're not really you're really not gonna see this. Um, it has a a brushless motor. Uh, hopefully you can see its its front motor because uh, you can't see because it's black right there. There you go. It's a rock crawler specific brushless motor. I honestly didn't know that they actually made brushless uh, motors for rock crawlers. Because when you think of brushless motors, you think of 60 mile an hour 3S LiPo, fast remote control cars, you know, zipping around your streets, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I, you learn something every day on the RC world. <laughs> um, like I said, this is used. It has a XT90 connector uh, to a Traxxas plug. And... I have a, I, I mainly use Traxxas connectors because, you know, I have Traxxas. Um, let's see. Uh, like I said, brushless motor speed controller combo. Uh, this one's actually running the Hobbywing. The Hobbywing ESC. I believe this is an SC8. I don't know. Um, but it does have crawler mode on it. Um, and over here on this side, there are... On the passenger side, we're normally a passenger. The passenger side of the car has uh, two servos. One of them's duty is to lock the front diffs only, and the other one's is uh, duty is to lock the rear diffs. So, one flick of a switch, you lock the front diffs only, and then you f uh, flick another level on the switch, and you have all uh, differentials locked. This blue one over here that you can see, that is a, uh, I believe that's a 2080. I think it's a 2080. I'm not too sure. No, uh, no, uh, I beg your pardon. That's a 20, 20, 2065, if I can, if I can read it. I, I, I can barely see what's, it's kind of dark in there. But it's a, it's a micro servo, and that's actually controlling the two-speed, two-speed transmission on this thing. So... This thing has servos all over this vehicle. So there's one, two, three, four servos um, controlling this car. You have one that's controlling the transmission, two controlling the diffs, and obviously one for the steering duties. So yeah, this thing is loaded. So like I said, the seller or who was that I actually ended up trading with for my uh, Traxxas Nitro Slash, this thing is basically a a regular TRX4 with all the features that you need, uh, like the locking disc and the two-speed transmission. Um, like I said, this was originally a sport, she told me, and that's been modified to have these upgrades, you know, as if it was just a regular TRX4, Defender, Bronco, uh, Blazer, or even the, uh, possibly the tactical unit. Um, the only thing that's different um, that was has been added was this thing right over here. I am not too sure what this is. It looks like it's supposed to be for lights, but I don't recall any connectors that has that. But I do have a. But like I said, I have headlights installed on my, on my uh, Forerunner body, and it has a connector that I can connect it to this little uh, connector that you possibly can't see. It's right over there. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can see it. Eh, I don't want to the camera and uh, make you guys dizzy um, but yeah uh, it's there 
Um, upgrades wise, yeah, I know I'm pretty much going all over the place here. I'm pretty much rambling and I'm not really organized here. I'm just shooting from the hip here. Um, upgrades wise, the servo is not original. That's not the Traxxas uh, 2075X uh, Metal Gear servo. This is not, this motor here is not original. Um, normally, if you get a TRX4 ready to run, you will get the XL5 HV. That's uh, the first XL5 that can actually tolerate 3S LiPo. Because the old XL5 ESCs, the, um, the ones that had the black heat sink, uh, before the ones that, before the ones that are, the new ones that actually come with the, um, the ready to run Rustler, the Slash, Stampede, and Bandit that you get nowadays. Uh, which doesn't have the heat sink those old ones were able to accept 3s lipo but it it, it would but it, it can't really do it because it would jeopardize the electronics on it so the xl5 hv was uh, the only xl5 esc that i know that can actually tolerate the voltage and the, uh, the punch and power of 3s lipo so yeah, if you have a an, a regular ready to run TRX4, you would have a XL5 HV and a Titan 21 turn uh, brush motor. But this one has been upgraded to brushless and Hobbywing with a RC crawler brushless motor in it. You know, I can't say no to that. You know, especially a good deal. Um, uh, up. Uh, what are the other upgrades? Um, you might not see it here, but the uh, the suspension, um, they're not the stocks. Those, you can't see it, but you'll see a little HR in there. This is a hot racing uh, suspension. It's not coilover shocks that you would find on the regular TRX4. These are, I believe there's um, springs inside of here, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, that's, those are really good upgrades, so. Yeah, that's pretty much the upgrades that's are, that are done in this car. Um, nothing really changed. Uh, oh, by the way, when I originally got this TRX4, um, it did not have any, didn't have a blazer body, didn't have a Bronco body, did not have a tactical unit body, nor a defender body. It had one of those hard body Jeep Cherokee pickup truck bodies on it, and it was held by Velcros instead of um, uh, traditional body mounts. Um, I sold that. And uh, and uh, got myself the Forerunner body. So yeah, uh, I mean, there was nothing wrong about the Jeep body. I just didn't want that because I wanted to have a Forerunner body on a rock crawler because I love Forerunners. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, chassis, body on frame, just like the real real cars, except modern cars those are now unibody um i'll go over those car facts oh god not the stupid car facts commercial again ah um but uh um nowadays cars are unibody but very few cars today are doing body on frames uh the only easiest way to talk about body on frame cars are pickup trucks those are body on frame uh, which means the body of the art of a car goes on a slap on top of the chassis. The chassis and the body are two separate pieces, and that's what this is actually a body on frame um, um, design, which is actually pretty acceptable for rock crawlers. And plus, the real Toyota 4Runner is a is. But by far, even today, one of the only modern cars that still uses the traditional body-on-frame design. So you do have that toughness of body-on-frame. When you think of body-on-frame vehicles, it sounds tough. But uh, yeah, sorry about rambling about you know how awesome this thing is. This is just the first crawler I ever owned. You know, it's worth talking about. Especially, I wanted to have something a little bit different, especially on RCs that I have that are like freaking fast, like over 35 miles an hour. I have a brushless Vortec that can go like 60 miles an hour. I want to go ahead and do something a little bit different and get myself a something slow. And uh, yeah, something slow. Okay, so um, 
Let's go underneath the body uh, of this Forerunner thing. I'm gonna move the, bring the chassis down, and sorry for hitting the camera, the tripod stuff. Um, this is the interior um, that I got. This is also from Proline. This is a direct uh, fit for the Toyota Forerunner body. Um, I did uh, cut cut this piece here so I can accommodate the holes. So um, let's see. What I did, this is pretty straightforward. All I just need to do is just like uh, painting a regular XM body is just go underneath and paint it. So how did I put the figures in here? Um, first of all, the steering wheel, um, that was actually from Axial. I actually got a parts tree for it and um, got, I just chose the steering wheel and took it out. So that, that came from an Axial parts tree set. Uh, and so as this manual transmission shifter, yes, I said manual transmission shifter, even though my my real forerunner is an automatic. I just like manual transmissions. I just think they're they are better than automatics. Well, well, to each their own. Um, this little Starbucks cup is not or is not part of the set from Axial. That's just something I just added because one of the dolls here have had a cup. I believe it was uh, Pinkie Pie that had it. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, you do have some detail in the dashboard over there. Uh, you got a glove box underneath over there where, Al where Apple Jack's feet are. Uh, the door handles, and I, <laughs> I actually like this right here. Um, my my real Forerunner has uh, electronic window switches. This one has the old school crank where um, you. Crank, uh, use a crank to roll down the windows and roll it up. Oh my god, that is so old school. I like that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so if you guys are wondering how was I able to um, uh, make the seat belts, all I did is get two zip ties, uh, or in this case, I use, I, ha I have eight uh, for the f to accommodate for four passengers. Um, all I just did is use a body reamer and punch the hole on the side of the seat and also uh, punch another hole over here to, uh, where the um, where normally a uh, or what, what's that called um, the seat belt buckles will will be on to buck your, buckle yourself up um, so I punched another hole there and all I just did is went underneath and just uh, zip tie them up and I actually had the fig. I actually did the seat belts first, then put the figure on the seat, and then I strapped them in tight, tightly. So now they ain't they ain't going anywhere. But I can still take them off though. But um, as far as, as staying in the car, especially when I'm drive when I'm driving the car, um, they're not gonna go anywhere. So there's they're in there snug, but they're not. Uh, but they're snug enough that I can be able to take them out and swap, you know, who's going to be driving, who's going to be uh, sitting in the passenger seat. So, um, let's talk about the passengers inside the car. Um, we have, obviously, Pinkie Pie, who's sitting on the driver side, um, back seat. And we have Rainbow Dash here on the passenger side, rear seat, Applejack on the passenger seat, and Sunset Shimmer uh, doing the driving. Because in the EQG series, uh, Sunset Shimmer is the only... Uh, MLP character uh, in the um, uh, one of the major characters in the Equestria Girls uh, line that actually drives a car. So and there she is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and oh, I actually almost forgot. Uh, if you guys are wondering why is there a hole here, because that's supposed to accommodate for the uh, body mounts. So yeah, it kind of does, does look ugly. I'll figure out a way how to cover that. That will come in a later day. But for now. I think it's okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the body back, uh, put the body back on, and put this thing back inside the body, and I'll do that off camera. I also forgot to mention uh, the chassis here is a uh, swivel, then click. And that that trait is actually from the Traxxas Fortec 2.0. Ah, uh, sometimes I forget stuff. But there you go. This is my Traxxas TRX4 with the Proline 4 Runner body. I really call it, I'm really 
mainly call this thing the TRX Forerunner. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, I'm very funny. Not really. Uh, but uh, yeah, I really love this thing. But is this my full review? No, not really. Because that will be coming in, in a later video. But as of now, this is just an overview of what I got and what's my setup and the background, how I actually got this thing. So thank you so much for watching. And, you know, I'll be posting some more rock color videos on this thing. Because ever since I actually got this thing, I've been driving this more often than my other RCs. Which I feel bad. I kind of want to drive those things again. So, um, but yeah. Till next time.